Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And I changed a little bit of my scenery. This is my backyard right now. And today's plan is to at least get some sort of minimal solar setup on this shed. So it's going to be basically my solar power shed. So let's get started. So I've actually been planning to do a solar setup on this shed for quite some time now. And I actually ordered all these parts back in June, prepping to set it up during the summer, but obviously that didn't happen. So I'm doing it now in the winter. It's like 40 degrees right now, so I'm still gonna do it anyway, but that's besides the point. So I currently have a lot of power tools that are battery powered. My uh, snow blower, lawn mower, uh, leaf blower, power tools, just regular snap on stuff, like a ton of stuff that is battery powered that I would love to have some off grid solar charging. That's my initial plan on this solar setup. So I want to set it up so this shed can actually just be a charging station for now. Eventually I will expand on it and probably do other stuff to get it maybe more power, do something else. But for now, that's my initial plan. Now I did do a little bit of research on this, which makes me basically an expert compared to people who've done zero research on this. So yeah, anyway, let me show you guys what I got. So what I got going on over here is basically a solar kit setup that I got from Amazon. Um, it's a 100 watt panel that comes with a PWM solar charger, uh, some hardware cables, and this is a battery that I just had left over. Now I did play around with this setup and I did put it together and it got everything working, but quickly you will realize that PWM chargers is not the way to go. Everyone just says, don't use this one, upgrade it to MPPT because you'll get the most efficiency out of it. So that's what I ended up doing. I'm not sure if it was just too cold or I'm having brain farts, but what I meant to say was Renogy and phosphate back to the video bought this Renology uh, solar panel charger with the Bluetooth connection so I could pull stats from it in the future for you guys but this is probably the way to go with MPPT chargers now because I read a lot of information about car batteries not the best to use in a solar setup I decided to upgrade to a lithium polymer battery 12 volts 20 amp hour now this is a very small battery but again this is what I consider tuition what i mean by that is that i am actually purchasing all this stuff to play around with and learn so i'm not going to get the most expensive things right off the bat but a small little battery to start off with a charger that actually is pretty good and a solar panel uh, eventually these are all upgradable so it's not like i'm stuck with this setup but at least the initial cost of me to learn this is not that much so total cost of getting everything all together I'll leave it on the screen right over here. So I have the initial setup that I just did with this kit. And then these are the stuff that I added over here. Now, the plan is to get it to the roof over here. There's a lot of like stuff that I learned after the fact, other than solar chargers come in to the solar charger, then charges the battery and then inverter to use the battery. That Those are the like the basics, but there are more to it, especially like facing southwards towards the equator. That's a better optimal flow for the sun. And then you got um, the best type of batteries that you want to use because those batteries have 5,000 charge life cycles. It's like a lot of things in research. So I got the setup to the point where I want it to be. The shed is facing southwards and it's tilted towards that angle. So it's pretty optimal for that type of setup as well. So yeah, that's the plan on that now. Let me bring you around real quick. All right, so here is my shed. I do have a dent over there because a tree that used to be over here fell on top of it. I did fix it from the outside and the inside. It's not perfect, but at least it's not broken. I do have to spray it because it's starting to rust because of that. Now I am planning to put the solar panel over here and it's a lot smaller than the roof itself. Technically, I could fit a 200 watt panel going down, that's like the length of it, and then run the wire inside across the shed to here, because this is where the entrance is, and then I have access to everything I need right as I walk in. So that's the plan. Now, today's objective is to at least get the solar up and possibly run the cable in and start charging the battery, that's it. I don't think I'm gonna use the battery yet, but at least I wanna see that all the connections are made, everything is working. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and bolt these four things now. They're all 10 millimeter bolts, and I'm just gonna go this way, and it comes with like uh, washers and everything that you need. So I'm gonna do it to all four sides. I gotta say, it is pretty nice now that the sun's coming out 
and it feels a little bit warm and I'm almost done with this part so I could start putting it onto the shed. Now, second thing I want to know is that is this long enough to actually run from one side of the shed all the way to the other side, which I think it should. I actually never thought about this. Originally, I was going to put the solar panel on the left side so the wires wouldn't be a problem, but nothing I want to deal with right now with the dented shed and everything. It looks like it is enough. I'm going to check this out. Yeah, I don't see it to be a problem. I should have enough slack just to run it from one side all the way to the other and reach the solar charge controller. All right, so the plan now is to put it up on the roof and see how it fits. Exactly the concept I had in my mind. Basically, it'll run between these two channels. I can just mount it down. It's got area for the rain to go and it sits up like this as you can see it actually has plenty of room up on top and I can move to the right if I want to I probably might shift it one to the right but the amount of solar panels that I could fit over here and keep all the batteries charged in the future but again initial setup learning process tuition fees you get it all right so these are the screws that it comes with. It's an eight millimeter screw that actually has like some sort of bite into it. So I could just drill right into the sheet metal that I have over there. And it also has a little plastic washer pre-built in that uh, I guess helps seal the water in. I do have a little eight millimeter drill bit that I can just attach this on and drill it right in. So that shouldn't be a problem. So everything looks straight to me right now. I'm just gonna start drilling. Wow, goes in real good. It's real tight. Seven more screws to go and this should be mounted, but at least I know it's not gonna move around now. All right, so for now I'm gonna sneak uh, the cable through here. You can actually buy a box that goes on the outside that you could cut a hole and run the solar pa uh, power cables through there, which I'll get in the future because I didn't know about it until as I'm doing this project. So yeah, for now I'm gonna run it into here temporarily. I did uh, put a little Teflon tape, you could say, so it won't scratch the edge, even though the edge is not sharp, just in case if it does like swing around because of the wind and stuff, it won't cut the wire. These wires are already pre-soldered, so basically I just need to snake them in. Oh, there's a little bit of grass on there. So the plan now is to actually take this board and I want to mount it up on this wall somehow, like right here. This way I could actually mount all the solar stuff over here before I run the cable to the rest of the spots. But I got to figure a way how to hold this while I drill through the back from the outside in. So that's the next plan. I managed to get that in now. Got a couple of screws bolted in from the other side and this is tight now so we are good i'm gonna be able to mount my solar charger here run my cables and finish up the rest at least get the initial setup in and get this over with you know it'd suck right now if the cables were not long enough even though i kind of measured it would i'm gonna let it sit down on the floor for now until i kind of properly mount it later in the future but uh we are we are set all right so i finally mounted up a board this way I could just put everything up here and I got my little charge control set up. It's not perfectly straight, but eh, it's fine. It's good enough for now. So for now, I'm just going to pre-hook up everything and make sure everything runs. That I didn't break anything. Uh, I don't want to run all the cables yet because I still want to do that uh, outside hookup where I could run the cables inside properly. So I still need to rerun the cables in the future again. So yeah, I'm going to be doing that. So they're going to be more upgrades in the future to this setup because eventually the whole plan is first get it started as a charging setup. This way I could start charging all my batteries and stuff like that over here. Then eventually maybe run a Raspberry Pi or a couple of Picos or something out here and turn it into my little workshop. And if I do have enough power in the future and I insulate this whole thing and turn it into my little workshop, I could actually throw 3D printers out here and have it run off solar. Possibly. I don't know. But that's just a thought that I have. 
Now, because eventually I want to get a block, which I see a lot of people do, and also um, fuses and all that stuff, this is not finished yet. I do want to hook up a fuse in the future and uh, a few other things. But temporarily, I'm going to get this going to start charging this little uh, battery and see if everything works. So I'm going to use these alligator clips, which again, I will change in the future because I want to change it to a block setup. I'm also going to pre-hook up these wires. They're not connected outside, so it doesn't matter. But I'm going to pre-hook up these wires which is the solar cables onto the system as well. And no, I'm not putting anything onto load. Uh, I don't really know what load is for yet. Uh, people put lights on them or something that's low amperage. You can't put an inverter into the load or anything. So I'm gonna leave the load pretty empty. Okay, it's a little sloppy, but it's gonna work. I'm gonna pop this into the battery now. Funny to say, this is actually a generator. <laughs> All right, so positive. Actually, I'll do it this way. Negative, positive, it's lighting up. And this is the first sign of life that we really have. Basically, I got 13.2 volts on the battery. Uh, the load, I guess, is not running or it's on. I really can't tell right now. I do want to hook up the Bluetooth so I can check out the stats, but it seems to be working. So I'm gonna go outside and connect the solar and you'll see if it starts flashing or not. Oh, there you go. MPPT, charge, it sees the solar. Now it's going up, 13 volts, 13.5. So I'm getting the app up right now. No data available, allow, turning on Bluetooth. All right, so these are the stats that I have right now. 16 watts out of the 100, which is terrible, but again, this is really overcast. I'm not even getting any sun other than the afternoon of like half an hour that I got. Uh, shows the battery voltage, so it shows the current temperature, which I don't even have it hooked up. And then it's got nothing on load. As far as records go, I could actually take these stats from yesterday, next day, and all that stuff, and then put it into like some sort of Excel sheet, and then show you guys what I've been getting. Settings, you could change the type of battery, voltage, too hot, too cold, stuff like that. I'm not too familiar with this option yet, but I got to read the instructions to see what I need to set up. But a lot of people say this is just plug and play and it should work right off the bat. All right, now that I got some sun poking in, as you can see, it's pretty bright outside. Uh, let me adjust this a little bit. I'm finally getting 19.4 volts, 1.3 amps and 26 uh, watts of power. Um, still charging and I put up the temperature sensor so it's now uh, it's detecting as 5c which is pretty cold and yeah I got all my stats over here what I don't like is that the Bluetooth actually has a very short range so I wasn't able to like go further um, to get the information so I had to get to get close to my shed just to pull this up at least I'm getting some solar and I know it's working all right so this is what I'm working with now I put up a little table Got my little battery, everything all set up. Temperature sensor is just dangling over there. They say like you could keep it around just to keep the environment so you know how cold it is. But this is my temporary setup until I build an actual workbench where I could put more batteries in the future and appliances and stuff like that. So temporary setup. As far as the outside goes, this is how it wired up. Got the panel, got the wires over here snaked inside. And that's how it looks. Looks pretty good. All right, so some of you guys might be interested to see this in action. So what I got going on is alligator clips all over the place. This is terrible. This is not how the real end results will be, but for testing purposes, I have this hooked up to the battery and it's charging. The alligator clips is hooked up to my 400 watt inverter. I have another thousand watt inverter, but it's not gonna power this. So I'm just gonna use my tiny 400 watt inverter powered on. What it should be able to do is actually power my other battery bank, which is this Soski thing. I actually have another bigger battery bank, but I didn't want to bring it out. This one is pretty good in itself because it has a lot of USB chargers and stuff, but I do love battery banks because they're perfect for camping, especially blowing up air beds and stuff. I am gonna plug this into my inverter and pop this into there. There we have it. It's charging now. Now, does it show on the app? All right, doesn't show much information that I need, but at least I know it's still working. I didn't break anything. Uh, it is charging. It's charging this battery bank. Um, it's also got, let me see if I can plug in my little snap-on uh, thing. Let me unplug this to this inverter. And, oh, there you go. 
it's charging. It's got the red light flashing right here, charging my thing. Oh, this one's pulling more because you can see now it's 13.2 volts right there. Instead of 13.8, what it was showing before. So 13.1. So this one is drawing a lot more battery as it's trying to charge a snap-on battery. It might show me different stats now on the app. Yeah, there you go. It's showing 94% capacity. 19 volts, 23 watts. 13 volts and it's dropping. Oh, actually 93, 92. I mean, that battery is not charged at all. It comes only 30%. So I haven't had a chance to really charge the battery, uh, but I'm glad everything's working. All right, sticking this inverter in seems to be a little bit better, even though it's way over the power limit of this battery. But at least I could see the discharge rating and I finally hooked up a light. I mean, it's not great, but it still works. So yeah, this is a little bit better as far as like trying to figure out the voltage, draws and everything. So I'm not gonna keep this long term until I upgrade the battery pack, but I could use this as well. All right, so that is it for me, guys. Um, I actually really enjoyed putting this build up. It honestly wasn't too hard. It was tedious because I had to get the wires in, install it to a roof, uh, get stuff installed inside. But ultimately, it wasn't that hard. Um, it's a couple of wires that you just got to run to get it all set up. Now, I know this setup is not complete. I actually want to do a lot more stuff to it, especially um, running the cables properly on the outside, getting a bigger uh, power bank because with the 100 watt setup, and that small little battery, it's not gonna be able to charge much. Uh, at least I got the initial setup going. If you guys are familiar with solar setups or you guys know what to do, uh, let me know your critiques. Uh, let me know what I should be adding or changing out. Again, I will be adding a fuse. I do wanna add that outside panel so the wires will come in properly. Uh, a few other things that I wanna do. Um, expand on the power bank. I might wanna go up to 100 amp hours total. And uh, eventually I want to move some Raspberry Pis out here, maybe run a solar server setup or something or I don't know. The plan is when it gets a little bit warmer, like spring, I might insulate that, build it out, turn it into a little workshop. Uh, I could use it for both storage and possibly run some stuff out here that I want to. So that's the ultimate goal. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below. I will be listing out everything that I bought down in the description below as well. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, Hack till it hurts. <coughs> I really can't believe I'm doing this while I have pneumonia. I am coughing up a storm right now. It is. I. If you see a lot of jump cuts, that's because I'm just constantly coughing. It's, it's so bad. Anyway, thanks for sticking around.